Hello there. So far in this discussion of derivatives, I've been following John Hall as he is assigned in topic three of the FRM. And the discussion about stock options has really been about what we would call standard options. Standard options are so common that we oftentimes don't even bother to explicitly say that we're talking about standard options. And another term for these are plain vanilla options. These are options that would trade on an exchange because the specifications of the options are standardized according to the contract, and this allows them to be traded on the exchange and give traders, buyers and sellers of the options, greater liquidity. So a standard option, a plain vanilla option, would be the call option that we usually think about that would have a single exercise date, for example, one year, and a single fixed strike price, for example, $40. So in this case, a one-year call option with the right, but not the obligation, to purchase the asset for the strike price of $40. So now I'll start the sub-series on exotic options. The definition of exotic options is very straightforward. An exotic option is any option that is not standard. So because it's not standard, they will not trade on an exchange and they will be over the counter. They will be customized in theory, offering a more tailored risk reward profile for the user. And I'll start with the first exotic option in John Hall, and these are compound options. Compound options are options on options, for example, a call on a call. So we'll look at all four permutations of the compound option at the end. I'll show you a little bit about the pricing of the compound option. The compound option has two options, so that means there's four permutations. I've used colors to help distinguish. Green is for a call, red is for a put. So that means we have a call on a call. Notice green, green. We can have a call on a put. See green, red. We can have a put on a call, red, green. And finally, a put on a put. So I'll walk through each of these four permutations and finish with just a, sl a small pricing example so you can see the main advantage of a compound option. And the call on the call, maybe this is the easiest one, is illustrated here. See green, green. Because it's a compound option, it has two exercise dates and two strike prices. So as usual, I'm following John Hall and the exercise dates are denoted T1, T2, and for each of these examples, I have the first exercise date is six months or 0.5 years, and the second exercise date denoted T2 is one year. And the corresponding strike or exercise prices are denoted K1 and K2, and I'm just gonna use, I've arbitrarily assumed these inputs in yellow, the first strike price is $10, and the second strike price is $40. Finally, my initial stock price today, as usual, denoted S sub zero, is $40. For pricing, of course, we'll need an assumption about the volatility of this stock. But I won't do pricing here because we know from experience that it's hard enough just to get the concept down at first. So the call and the call, what does that mean? That means that today, time zero, we can purchase this compound option, in this case, a call and a call, and then we will have at the first exercise date, the right but not the obligation to exercise this call and a call. And that means we can pay the strike price here of $10 and we will receive a call, right? Normally with an option, we pay the strike, we receive the asset or the stock. In a compound option here, in the case of the call on the call, we're paying the, the first strike price in order to receive a call option. And so here, um, where the first strike price is $10, we will only do that, if we think about it, if the value at this point in time, and I'm just going to note, denote that with a small c, 0. 0.5 to indicate what's the value of this of a call option at this point in time. And that call option you can see is only gonna have six months remaining maturity or six months until um, expiration. 
we're only going to exercise this call on a call if the value of that call is greater than what we need to pay for it, which is the strike price. Or in this case, if the value of that call is greater than $10, because we have that option. That's the first option in the compound option. So if we exercise it, we pay $10 and we then hold the call option. So we have a long position in a six month call option that itself has a strike price of $40. So now we have a typical long call option position. And at one year, we can then exercise that call, meaning pay the $40 and receive the stock. And again, that is the right, but not the obligation. So we're only going to do that if the stock at this point in time, which I'll denote stock at one year, is greater than this strike price or in this case, greater than $40. And so that's the call on a call. And you'll notice it's really a joint event Two thing. If we purchase the call on a call, two things need to happen for this to be profitable. First, we will want to exercise the value of the call at this point in time will need to be sufficiently valuable. And then holding the option, the final stock price will need to be sufficiently value for, valuable for us to exercise. Okay, so then a call and a put, not so different really. With the call and a put, here we get to the first exercise date, T1, and we have a decision, the right but not the obligation, to exercise this compound option and pay $10 in order to receive, in this case, a put. And so we will only do that if the value of this put at this point in time, which I'll just denote P at the six month mark, if that's greater than what we pay for it, which in this case is $10. So if we exercise, we pay the premium of 10 or the strike price, I should say, the strike price at this point in time of $10. And we will then hold a put option. We'll have a long position in a put option with six months to expiration. And that put option in this case, will have a strike price of $40. So that when we get to the one year, the second exercise date, right? First exercise date, second exercise date, we will then again have the right but not the obligation to exercise in this case, the put option, which we will only do if the stock price is less than the strike price. In this case, if the stock price is below $40. But again, we needed a joint event for this call on the put that we purchased today at time zero, a joint event to make this profitable for us. At the first exercise date, that put needs to be sufficiently valuable for us to pay $10 for it. And then at the one year mark, the stock needs to be in the money sufficiently low such that the put that we purchased is in the money. Okay, so third of the four, and these may be, for me, these are conceptually a little more difficult, first time I looked at it the put on the call. Now we are still making the purchase at time zero, but in this case, the put on the call as an instance or variation of the compound option is giving us the right, but not the obligation at the first exercise date here of six months to sell a call option. So if in six months we get here, to this point in time and the value of the call option, which I will denote as C at six months, if the call option, if the value of it is less than the $10, in this case, if it's less than, I'm sorry, less than K1 or less than $10, then we have a cheap call option and we're going to sell that. And because this is the $10 that we will receive, this first exercise price is effectively the premium that we receive on this call option that we make the decision to sell. So in this case, if we exercise at the first exercise date, we now, we are a, a call option writer or seller, or we have a short position in the call option here at this point with six months to maturity, such that when we get to the one year mark, it's not our decision, right? We decided here, we exercised, which was the uh, right to 
sell an option. Now it's our counterparty who holds that call option. And of course, they will exercise that call option if the stock price at this point in time is greater than the second exercise price. In my example, $40, right? then our call option that we've written, if it's in the money, our counterparty will exercise. And as you know about options, we actually have an uncapped liability here on the upside. Okay, that's the put on the call. But again, a joint event for our success required, first of all, the call option here for the put on the call, first at, first, at the first exercise date, the call option needs to be cheap enough for us to sell it. And then the second event is the stock price needs to be low enough such that it expires worthlessly and our counterparty doesn't exercise it so we don't have to pay. But so a joint event again, just a different joint event. And finally, the put on a put. Now, again, at the first exercise date of six months, we have the right to sell, in this case, a put. And we're only going to do that if the put is cheap enough or cheaper than the first exercise price, which is the premium that we would be collecting for. So if at this point in time, the put is less worth less than $10, we'll sell it for $10, pocket that premium. And then we will have written or sold the put option. So we have a short position in a six month put option such that again, it's up to our counterparty to exercise and they will exercise in this case, of course, if the stock price at this one year mark is less than the second exercise price, in this case, if it's less than $40. In this case, we won't have an uncapped liability. Our liability is capped. It can it not, cannot be greater than $40. Stock can't go less than zero. But we do have, again, that joint event in order for our success or profitability in the put on the put, we need the, the put here to be cheap enough that we would sell it. And then in the second case or the second exercise date, we actually want the stock price to be high enough that it expires worthlessly or out of the money. Okay, so finally, it seems complicated. Why would we even do it? Well, one reason we might do it here is we can pay, in relative terms, very little here today to have ourselves an eventual option. And so just by comparison, if we plugged into these assumptions and just wanted to purchase a plain vanilla call option today with a one-year maturity and a strike price of $40, so that's a one-year at the money call option, according to my Black Shoals, the price of that would be five, I'm just gonna say Black Shoals, it would be $5.50. One year call option allow us to exercise for $40. Now, on the other hand, if we purchased a call on a call with a, uh, a strike, with an exercise price here at T1 of $10, the price of this option is only 87 cents. And notice what that means. It means we pay less than a dollar. And that means we get to defer our decision for six months and then decide if we, in this case, if we want to pay $10. So cumulatively, we would have paid 1087, which admittedly is almost double the 550. And at that point, we would then hold the call option with a $40 strike price. However, notice that what, that what we bought here for less than a dollar is six months time in order to make a decision in order to hold the correspondingly equivalent option. So that's how I think of the advantage here. It's a very cheap way to buy ourselves some time and sort of punt on the decision. And it depends a lot here on the assumption here for K1. So for example, if we want to that first strike price to only be $5, then you'll notice this compound option goes up to $1.89. Now, in this case, we defer the decision for six months, and we would only have to pay $5 to get our $40 option. Um, 
This is 689 cumulatively and compares quite favorably, I think, to the 550. So you think about it, I can buy today the at the money plain vanilla call option for 550 strike on strike of $40 or I pay less than $2. I have six months to decide. Then I can pay another $5 to have that same option, almost sort of topping up my balance here. And from my perspective, that's almost almost more desirable. On the other hand, if we raised this price to say $20, that's quite a bit. You notice this compound option here goes down to 15 cents. It gets pretty close to zero if we're willing to make this initial exercise price sufficiently high. Okay, so that's basically my introduction to the compound options. Call on a call, call on a put, put on a call, put on a put. I hope that was helpful. If it was helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified of our next video. Thank you.